Hello. Welcome to Geography Nuts. Are you ready to explore Dominican Republic with me? Is Dominican Republic too long of a name? You can call it DR or Dominican. But be careful. Don't call it Dominica. It's a whole another country, a boat ride away from DR. DR is located in the island of Hispaniola in the Great Antilles in the Caribbean region of North America. It occupies the eastern two-thirds of the island and the other one-third goes to Haiti. It is the second largest country in the Caribbean Sea and it is also the most visited country. In 2019, it is expected that about 7 million people visited DR. DR is divided into 31 provinces and one district, San Domingo, the capital. San Domingo is the oldest city in the Americas. This is where Christopher Columbus' brother, Bartholomew Columbus, established a successful first Spanish settlement. This is Dominican Republic's flag. A white cross divides the flag into four rectangles, blue and red at the top and red and blue at the bottom. The blue stands for liberty, white for salvation and the red is for the blood of the heroes who fought for independence. The coat of arms is placed in the center and it has a Bible that makes this flag very unique. It is the only flag in the world to have Bible on it. This is the coat of arms. The shield is similarly quartered as the flag. In the center of the shield, flanked by six spears, the front four holding the flag is a Bible, open to St. Joseph's Gospel 832, with a small golden cross above it. The shield is supported by Bay of Laurel branch and palm front. Above the shield, a blue ribbon displays the national motto God, Homeland and Liberty in Spanish. Below the shield, the word Republica Dominica, the country's name. So we have just completed the basic introduction of the country. Now we are going on to geography, history and then people. So it's going to get interesting, I promise. But before we go further, could you please consider subscribing to my channel and click the like button, please. This is geographically a very diverse place. It includes over 1200 kilometers of coastline with 200 white sandy beaches, evergreen forest in the highland, fertile valleys with luscious vegetation, and even deserts with dunes and cacti. Total area of the DR is somewhat disputed between 48,442 and 48,670 square kilometers. Either way, it is the second largest country in the Caribbean after Cuba. It shares the land border with Haiti, situated between Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. There are many small offshore islands and keys are part of Dominican territories. The two largest and near the shore are Siona and Beata. DR has four main mountain ranges. The most northerly one is Cordillera Septentrional. The highest range is the Cordillera Central. It has not one, not two, not three, four highest peaks in the Caribbean. Pico Duarte is the highest peak. South of the Cordillera Central, there are two other ranges, Sierra de Neba and Sierra de Bauruco. A rich fertile valley lies between the central and northern mountain ranges. This area is home to many commercial farms. The Enrique Basin lies between the two Sierra Mountains. This area is below sea level with hot, arid, desert-like environment. It's home to the largest lake, Enrique. It's a salt water lake 45 meters below sea level. The lowest elevation in Caribbean. Yep. DR has the highest and the lowest elevation in the Caribbean. It is also the only saltwater lake in the world inhabited by crocodiles. There are four major river systems. The Jaco del Norte is the longest and the most important one. It runs down from Cibao Valley and empty into Monte Cristi Bay. DR is also home to many lakes and coastal lagoons. 
the largest lake is Lake Enrico. Remember the salty lake with the crocodile? The other important lake is Laguna de Renga. That's the freshwater lake. Samana Peninsula is one of the best places to watch North Atlantic humpback whales between mid-January and March as they migrate. There are over 6 million palm trees in this area too. Even though DR is not a big country, quarter of all Dominican Republic's land and shoreline are protected. Dominican Republic has a near-perfect weather, over 300 days of sunshine. Year around average temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius. But occasionally, on a very rare occasion, snow falls in the higher mountains. Wet season along the northern coast lasts from November to January. The rest of the country is from May to November, with May being the wettest month. Tropical cyclones are common. However, hurricanes are very rare. The last serious one was Hurricane George in 1998. We don't know much about the first inhabitants of this island, but Tainos believed to have been moved into Hispanola from South America some times ago and established five chiefdom when Christopher Columba arrived in 1492. He named the island Hispanola. Spaniard established a colony in Santa Domingo. Eventually, it became a capital for Spanish colonies in all of America. Eventually, over time, Spanish lost control of the western part of the island to France. So, they signed a treaty with France to split the island and Spain kept the eastern part of the island known as Santa Domingo. However, between 1795 to 1821, Santa Domingo changed hand between Spain and France a few times. After many years of fight for independence, Santa Domingo's former lieutenant governor, Jose Nunez de Carteras, declared independence from Spain in 1821. But the independence lasted only two months. Haiti's president, John Pierre Boyer, took control of Dominican Republic, united Hispanola and imposed heavy tribute on Dominican people and took the land from wealthy white families. Juan Pablo Duarte Cocapa planned to take the country back. He used Haiti's rebellions as a chance to fight against Boyer. On February 27, 1844, his army won over Haitian military. Santa Domingo declared independence for the second time and became Dominican Republic. The next 10 years, Dominican military fought to preserve the independence from Haiti. Even after the independence, the trouble continued. Pedro Santano took over the country in 1858 and declared him as a president. A few years later, he returned Dominican Republic to Spain. Many Dominicans hated the idea of going back as a colony, so they revolted. And after four years of conflict between Dominican nationalists and Spanish sympathizers, in 1865, Spanish withdrew and Dominican Republic declared independence for the third time. But the war and fight still continued. Then the warlords and the military revolt brought uncertainty to the island and Dominican Republic's debit increased significantly. U.S. Marines were sent to Dominican Republic to protect U.S. interests and fight pirates operating out of Haiti. Relative peace came to the country in the 1880s, but by the turn of the century, Dominican was bankrupt and unable to pay its debit. Faced with the threat of military intervention by France and other European creditors, U.S. intervened and signed a deal with Dominican Republic and took control of the customs, which was the major source of income for the country, and used part of the proceeds to reduce debit. Dominican leadership was in disarray, so U.S. took over the country and administered in 1916. Many Dominicans resented the idea of U.S. occupation, but during the time, country's debit was reduced, budget was balanced, and the economy was stabilized. United States ended the occupation in 1924 
after Dominican Republic elected their government. A few years later, in 1930, Rafael Trujillo overthrew President Rocio Vasquez and established a dictatorship. He ruled the country until he was killed in 1961. Juan Bosch became the president, but military revolt took him down and the civil war started again. U.S. thought that the communist might take over Dominican Republic and create a second Cuba. So Lyndon Johnson sent military to the Dominican Republic and the military reminded their uncle Joaquin Balaguer was elected as president in 1966. Since then, Dominican leadership has been stable and Dominican people are enjoying a little bit more republic than dictatorship. Speaking of Dominican people, let's hop on to People and Culture. Dominican Republic is the third populous country in the Caribbean after Haiti and Cuba. About two-thirds of the population live in the urban area, mainly in the southern coast and Cibao Valley. Almost 3.5 million people live in Santo Domingo, the capital. About 70% of Dominicans are mixed race. Mestizos account for 58%, while mulattoes account for 12. 16% of them identify as blacks, 13 and a half white, mostly Spanish, and half a percentage of the population is immigrants, mainly from Lebanon, Syria, and Palestine. Haitians are the major migrant. About 800,000 Haitians are believed to be living in DR. Official language is Spanish. Most Dominicans speak Spanish as well. It is very similar to Caribbean Spanish. It has influence and borrowed words from African and indigenous languages. English and French are taught in school. Dominicans are very, very, very fast-talking people. Dominicans are very religious people. 95% of them are Christians. Christmas is epic with the wooden handmade Christmas trees, big family gathering, backyard pig roast, midnight mass. This is the time to spend with family and they do it very well. Dominicans are very family-oriented people. Oldest man in the family is the head of the family and the oldest married woman command the household. Education system need lots of improvement. Education is mandatory and free for elementary level from age 6 to 14. Even then, it is not strictly enforced. About 40% of students drop out of school before 8th grade. Music, dance and sports are important part of the culture. Morangue and Bacha are very famous. Baseball is by far the most popular sport. It is not just the sport for them. It could be a way to better life. Most American leagues have recruitment center in Dominica. Children drop out of school and practice more than five hours a day in the hopes that they could make it into American team. Actually, more than 100 players from Dominican Republic played in United States leagues. Dominican people and culture is amazing. I was lucky enough to experience once. So I don't want to include all the information I know and make this video too long. But if you are from Dominican Republic, we would love to hear from you. Say hi and put anything that you want us to know in the comment. Let's move on to economy. DR's. $209 billion economy is the largest economy in Caribbean and Central America. Over the last 25 years, at least until the COVID-19 pandemic, DR's economy is the fastest growing in the Americas. Tourism, remittance, foreign direct investment, mining revenues, free trade zone, and telecommunications are important pillars of DR's economy. About 7 million people visited DR in 2018 and 2019 and is expected to increase after the pandemic. DR has the second largest gold mine in the world and they also have silver and nickel. Agriculture is a major employer and it's also an important sector in terms of domestic consumption. Nearly 
all breakfast, lunch and dinner are grown locally. The main export crops are sugar, rice, banana, coffee, avocado, lemon, oranges, cocoa, tobacco and coconut. The most important trading partner is United States. Other major trade partners are China, Haiti, Canada and the United Kingdom. Medium income is about 5000 United States dollar a year. Income inequality is a big problem. The poorest half of the population receive less than one fifth of the GDP, while the richest 10 percentage enjoy nearly 40 percentage of the GDP. Growth in the economy hasn't helped significantly in the area of income inequality. I hope you learned something about Dominican Republic and enjoy watching this video. Dominican Republic is a great country. The people are amazing. The nature and the climate is wonderful. But the country also has some problems, mainly violence against women and immigrants from Haiti. The education system that need to improve. There has been progress in the last few years, but they need social policies that are genuinely geared toward the change that needed to ensure the decent future. Mainly, again, the education system. This need to be drastically changed and it has to be accessible to rich and poor. Thank you for watching. If you like this video or learn something new about Dominican Republic, please click the like button. And if you like to learn about other countries, please subscribe. The next independent country in the Caribbean is St. Kitts and Nevis. You may already know I do the videos from the map, like a regular map, from the top left corner and move down. And for the territories, I will do them after the main country. For an example, I already did the video on Puerto Rico and United States Virgin Islands after the United States. And I will do separate video on British Virgin Island and Angula after the British episode. So for now the next video is going to be St. Kitts and Nevis.